In this installment of the Soligo Smart Client video series, we're going to focus on line items. If you look at the mainline sales order result I'm showing in the dashboard, you'll see that mainline items like the number, the date, the name, and the amount are all listed. What's lacking are any of the line item details that would typically be associated with the transaction record, in this case, a sales order. We're going to use the get records function of the smart client to look at the exact same transaction record and its line item detail in two slightly different ways. The smart client lets you use multiple template results in a single spreadsheet and so we're just going to place one directly underneath another so that we can compare and contrast the two different views. Now up top we have a standard view and on the bottom we have an elegant view. The only difference between these two views is how much of the, of the main line data is being shown relative to the line items. On the bottom section, you'll notice that you only see the, some of the main line data on the first line of line items. Up top, you see it repeated for every single line item entry. So let's learn how it is these different views are managed. In the result template designer, I'm going to right click on the elegant sales order template that I've already built and choose edit. Right away, the main line fields are available to me. And you can see those main line fields in the lower left on the first row. When we click Next, we're given the option to use a sublist or line items. We can always deselect it using the link at the bottom, but in this case we do want the item list present and its fields, so we're going to reselect it and click Next. Once we've done that, the fields are on the left and there's a result layout that's available to us. Smart Client will default to the standard view, but in this case we want to use the elegant view. And before we click Next, I'm going to resize the dialog box again so that you can see how it will look when you're actually using the Smart Client. The fields on the left, again, move to the right. In this case, the item, the quantity, and the amount. So now that we understand better how to manage the different views, let's try to spend some time understanding why you would want to use the different views. We're going to show this by entering a new sales order that has multiple line items. We're going to set the number of initial rows to 5, and we're going to pre-populate some of this data. Now you'll notice that we used the very same template to add new records as we just used in the example to view records, and that means that we have to do some things differently. We'll start by entering the transaction date and the customer record, and now we have to pick an item. So we'll pick a compact laptop and a quantity of 3. Now, You'll notice that we did not fill in the transaction ID, the line column, or the amount. That's because those are values that are going to be given to us once we're done submitting the sales order. But we do have to pick an additional couple items here. So we're going to pick two other items and give this one a quantity of five and use the update all button to submit our new sales order. Now the smart client submits the order, tells us that it was successfully created, and gives us the internal IDs. Now you'll notice that the same internal ID is listed three times in a row, and that's because we only created a single transaction record, and it happens to have three line item entries. Now the line item internal ID is not available to us yet, and that's because we have only created the transaction when we submitted it. We actually don't have the internal IDs against that record back yet, but we can get them. We can do that simply by right clicking and choosing Refresh Results Table. When we refresh the result table, we're going to get back from NetSuite the internal IDs of the line items against that order. Not only are we going to get the internal ID for the line item, we're also going to get back the actual transaction ID and the amounts for the line items, because those were established when the order was submitted. We're going to use the same get record function we used in the previous example, to pull up this very same order in the standard view. The smart client needs to be able to distinguish whether a row is an entirely new order or the same order with multiple line items. The different views help accomplish this. To better understand this concept, let's look at the sales order we just created in the smart client in NetSuite. Now you can see that the item detail is here on the sales order, 
and included in that is the price level and it's set to the base price for all three items. So if we wanted to change the price level for each individual item, how would we accomplish that? And more to the point, how is it that we would distinguish individual items and which sales orders they went with? To show this, we're going to add two new sales orders for two new customers in the same result template. The first entry in our template is for Ackies Incorporated. It begins on row four. You can see there's a transaction date of July 1st, the customer name, and then two columns over we have the line item data. The second row does not contain main line items, it only contains the line item and the quantity. Row six starts the entry for the next customer and therefore the next sales order, all world produce. There are three line items there, and again these each have their own quantity. The smart client is able to differentiate between the two orders by looking at the presence of a value in the transaction date and entity columns. We use the update all button to create them. And then it's easy to see on the left that there are two internal IDs for the transaction record number, meaning we have two transactions that were created even though there are five entries. Three are duplicated in one and two in another. The, again, those are just the transaction record IDs, not the line items. When we refresh the results table, the internal IDs for each of the line items are returned, therefore verifying that this order was successfully created. So now let's review this order in NetSuite. We can see that the items, the quantities, and the price levels are all present. So if we want to change the price level, how is that accomplished? Well, the original template we had didn't contain that field, so we're going to duplicate this by right-clicking and choosing Make a Copy. We'll call this copy Elegant with Price Levels. Once our copy is made, we're going to select it, right-click, and choose Edit. And we're going to completely ignore the mainline fields and just click Next, and click Next once again for the, so we can get to the Item Sublist fields. And the one we're looking for is Price. It's not called Price Group, it just depends on whether or not you have Price and Groups enabled. Now you'll notice it says Real-Time Lookup. There's not a drop-down menu, so you're going to have to know what values you want to be looking for when you create an entry in your spreadsheet. You'll see that in a moment. So now that we have our template copy made, we'll click Finish to exit the template designer. We're going to use the Get Record function again. All we have to enter here are the internal record IDs that you see in column B, 1142, then a comma, then 1143, so we can get the two records. We're going to use our new template this time and hit OK. The smart client will present us with this new field because we're using the new template and it has base price listed for every single entry. We're going to pick one and change it. Now we mentioned a moment ago you'd have to know what the values were. We're going to type discount and hit tab on our keyboard that validates corporate discount price as being valid in NetSuite. We're going to click Update Selected Cell, and that's going to update just that line item value. On the left, you'll notice that all three of the internal IDs for the transaction record are issuing a warning from NetSuite, and that's just giving you a warning just as you would get in the GUI because we're trying to modify the sales order for uh, something that's already been shipped. So in the NetSuite browser, we click refresh and we can now see that the individual line items have been refreshed. Now remember everything we did today focused on a sales order but it doesn't have to be a sales order it could be any transaction or record type. Line items work the same way in the smart client with all of them. Thanks for watching.